How's it going, everyone? This is Anthony Porter over here at Uniserve USA over here in North Dallas, Texas. And we are doing our very first podcast as well as a video feed as we're doing right now. Um, and just wanted to introduce myself to you guys. Of course, I am Anthony again, um, property acquisitions dealer based out of North Dallas, Texas, and uh, introducing you guys to our very first video uh, podcast that we call Reverb. Reverb Real Estate Talk discussion in action okay and this is uh mainly going to be aimed for those who are in the or who are currently in the industry uh, it's going to be aimed for everyone that's going to be in the industry of course but this is going to be mainly this episode will be mainly aimed for uh those who are brand new those who are seeking to get started in this industry or those that are just in a transition period and need to know what to do you know before they do it because I know that question has been coming up a lot here lately, too. So, you know, well, just a brief introduction about the podcast of Reverb, as well as our YouTube channel, uh, which is Uniserve USA, which is the name right there on the board. So Reverb is about coming together as one to discuss real estate uh, property dealer talk and discussion. This is about being a property dealer in the real estate wholesale market. And how you can become one, how to, how to, how to sustain yourself while you are getting started, and even how to survive when you are one. So there's going to be a lot of discussions on this, and a lot more episodes, of course. So uh, a lot more shows. For us. I keep saying episodes because we've been doing a lot of videos. So forgive me if I'm going back and forth. <laughs> but you know, just to just to get started here. I mean, if you've ever thought about getting into the real estate industry, and you know, you, you're at work and you're just kind of, you know, flipping, flipping grilled chicken sandwiches and Mediterranean salads and stuff. Everybody else only making, a, a, you know, a few bucks here at a time. It's just not getting things done. You're barely sustaining at your bills. And then you start thinking about getting into a new new career and then real estate pops in your mind. You've ever had a thought like that. So if you've ever had a thought like that, um, you know, you kind of get it. You kind of put yourself in a in a limbo mode. You end up in a transitional period where you know i wonder if i get into this industry will i make it am i taking any risks will there be <clears throat> other factors that i have to account for yes there are other factors you need to account for and i'm going to be explaining those As a matter of fact you know right now it's going to be about mindset because uh you have to develop the mindset to be able to do this industry uh me honestly for me at least and i do this full time this is not a full time. This is not a, a part time position. I would not suggest trying to test the waters by, you know, giving it a shot, uh, you know, as, as a, even as I've said, OK, real estate is I mean, real estate is 24 hours a day. You understand, you know, because when you're in the middle of sleeping, you got the market changing. When you wake up in the morning is going to be different. You understand? So you got things like that to account for, but I want you to, but I want you to understand getting into this market is easy, especially when you want to be a property, uh, a property acquisitions dealer. Now, what am I, what is this property acquisitions dealer that I keep saying and that people have also asked me, what do you mean by property dealer? What is that? Okay. Well, I mean, it, it, it's it, what it, what it means is I am a, on a higher standard than wholesaler. I'm not a cheap street corner worker. I don't want to be a wholesaler. I want to be a dealer because that's what I do. I deal. I don't wholesale nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't buy at wholesale and then sell it off as a wholesale. I, I'm not a wholesaler. I'm a dealer. My, my duty is to, is to find the deals, get the deal and pass that deal on to somebody else. So it gets dealt. That's why I'm a, I call myself a property dealer. I just marry two people together. I'm just, I'm just a pastor in this, in this situation. Okay. You know, but so, you know, for those that are wondering, of course, but you know, so back on the mindset, uh, you know, if you got general, general thought process of how it works, now you start developing the mindset as if this is going to be for you or not. I can, I cannot say yay or nay for that, but I can most definitely say, uh, if you're tired of flipping those meditor, uh, flipping those chicken sandwiches and burgers and, you know, filing papers in and, in, you know, everywhere, you know, filing papers in the cabinet all over the place, being on, doing data entry and, you know, analysis for just making 10 bucks an hour only to find out you made $2,000 when you just saw 
someone like on a Facebook post or something. They just cleared ten thousand dollars. They just cleared what you did in in a couple of hours. <laughs> you then you, you kind of start thinking, okay. So for those that are really wanting to get, to get into this industry and having a very true thought process about this mindset is where your mind's going to have to be. Okay, you cannot have your mind scattered off into different little areas. You're uh, wondering what you know if this is going to be for you, and then trying to you know gamble with your own life. You know, getting your priorities mixed up. Maybe if I just leave this job, I can hear up and get into this real quick because I need to make some money. Okay. That's not how it works in the industry. Okay. Which is going to turn me right on over down to the next topic uh, about focus. Okay. Because once you, once you get into this, you must focus. Okay. Uh, you got to play, you got to do everything in order. You know, your mind is going to have to be about the properties uh, that you are working with and it, and you cannot have, I would suggest no distract distractions. Okay. Now I don't have of any family, I don't have any, uh, you know, family of my own per se. Now, for those who have kids, you know, I, I guess I can do another tier on this, and that's going to have to be delegation. You're going to have to delegate, okay? When I, I've seen people ask questions about how do you, how do you guys do it when you have family? Well, I mean, there's only one question, there's only one answer to that. It's delegation. I'm pretty sure as you were growing up and so forth, you probably heard that word delegation come up. We all know what that word is, you know. You, you, You've got to segment, segment your life. Okay, just just preserve a few little things that you preserve a few things in your life that you can do so you can do so you can focus on things for yourself. Okay. I mean, I'm saying you got children now, and this is not about, you know, you know this is this this is not Uniserve USA daycare service or anything like that. I'm just saying whenever you get into this industry, there's gonna be a lot of time that you're gonna have to spend doing research. Okay. Is that scary? Heck no, it's not scary at all because it's all numbers. We all grew up knowing math. Okay, learning math, okay, doing math. Okay, math, math, math. It's easy math at that when you really think about it. Okay, so I mean, we're going to be getting to that. So that brings me right on down to devotion. Okay, once you, once you have, once you planted your foot, you keep it there. You understand? Plant that foot, let that seed grow so you can progress. Okay. You're going to have to understand that you're going to have to devote your time because I promise you, once you get started, if you plan on doing this full time, you're going to have to learn ex to accept 12 hour days. You're going to have to learn that you may not be able to go out with the, with the ladies, you know, the ladies ain't going to be able to go out, hang out with the girlfriends to go have them some mimosas and so forth. You might have to just sit back at the house or Take your, I don't know, take your laptop with you. Maybe go drink some mimosas when you're there. <clears throat> go drink some mimosas when you're there. Hey, you know what? That's the power of being in this industry as a property dealer because you get to move your work wherever you want to. If you want to go take a vacation, you can go and take that vacation to whatever you want. So there's some, there's plenty of positive sides. You can go take a vacation at Maui and be in, and, and, and see what's going on in, in, in the market of in Florida or something. You know what I mean? So, but you know, back to devotion, devote yourself. Okay. If you're going to get into it, get into it. Don't just, don't, don't come in at 65%. Don't come in at 70%. This goes for you too. Don't come in at 80%, 90, go in at a hundred. Okay. Put in 110 if you need to put in some extra hours. Cause you know, put the time in that you would want given back to you. It's going to pay you back. Okay. It's going to pay you back in due time. Um, and dedication. Okay. Last segment of this right here is going to be dedication. Dedicate yourself. If you're going to start something, do it. Okay? If you say you want to do it, do it. Okay? Yeah, I, you know, I'm saying that because I'm seeing a lot of people, they, they like to ask a lot of questions to the people who are already doing it. But then I keep seeing these questions that become repetitive from the same person. They're not moving forward. They're hanging the fence. They keep riding on the shallow end, not really understanding that on the other end, it's not that much deep. Okay. And get deeper now. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? In this market, you have a lot of help. You will get a lot of help. There are millions, okay? There are thousands, thousands of, of dealers in this market that are more than willing to help you out, including myself, which is why I'm here on this episode doing a first podcast to bring you a perspective, you know, a bring you a perspective on how this market works, or at least how to get started in this market. So, um, you know, those I know I've been getting some questions that's been asked here about, you know, how do you get started? So I believe this very first uh, uh, show slash episode, YouTube video, whichever you want to call it, you know, it's just called getting started. It's plain and simple. OK, I mean, 
when you're getting so let's just say that you have the thought to start doing uh uh working in the wholesale industry you know as a, as a property dealer um one of the things that you need to focus focus on focus okay, is is it, it's it's not going to be bandit signs it's not going to be driving around wasting gas for dollars okay that's that's when, when you're brand new you have no knowledge it's not about getting bandit signs okay when you have no knowledge it's not about driving around for dollars you got you don't even know what you're looking for okay I, I, you know i've seen people mention that it might work for some but for the most part i mean you know when we had to, when we had to start high school we, i mean we didn't just automatically start working somewhere we had to learn what the heck we were doing or not high school but you know what i'm saying you know before we started school i mean it wasn't like we just we just automatically ran to college. No, we had to work in tears. We had to start from elementary, work our way up. You know what I'm saying? The middle, then high school, and you know, a little college, you know, wherever. For those that didn't go to college, no problem. You know, I didn't even finish mine. No big deal. But you know what? When you're making thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars, who gives a day? <laughs> anyways, that's not about what this is about, man. I'm I'm jumping subjects here. Okay, anyways, when you're getting started over here, uh uh in in this industry. The speaking of knowledge, the, the first thing you want to do is learn the numbers. Seriously, you want to learn the numbers, you guys. When you're looking for properties, uh, before you start looking for properties, you need to understand what the numbers are about. Okay, because number a CMA details is you know comparable comparable market analysis is the absolute first step in this market. You must know how to do before you, as much as determine if the deal is a deal. Okay. And I promise you, I'm going to tell you, how do you even figure out what the deal is a deal if you don't, if, if you know, the numbers game is going to be getting in the way first. Okay. Well, trust me. Stay with me. Okay. Look, so getting to know the property, <clears throat> getting to know the property will give you the opportunity to understand the, the, the values of that property. So you're able to determine a good offer that you can make, you know, for the seller client. Uh, it not only gives you an opportunity to learn about the values of that home, but you get to understand more about the market that's going on in that area because you'll be able to use your head, be able to determine, well, hey, you know what? This person right here might be selling something for this much, but this seller is asking for this when there's a house over here that's this much of the same exact type. So, you know, you get one thing to determine your CMA details is, is, you know, make sure that the bed and baths are the same. Making sure the square footages are similar. I would say similar. I'm a little tight, so I like to keep mine around 200 or so, give or take. Okay. Um, you also want to make sure that it's in the same vicinity or, or same division. Okay. Same stories. Okay. So if you if you're working a two story home, be careful when you're doing your analysis because you might end up putting in a, a one story and it doesn't count. Okay. Now I, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. I've made that mistake myself. Actually, that actually happened recently. I accidentally compared a one story with a two story and it kind of messed me over, but, but it was an off CMA thing to show that, you know, well, that's a different story. Okay. So after you've gotten your CMA details down and, and I'm summarizing because there's a video that we've already done that tells you guys in, in thorough fashion, how to do proper CMA details. So if you stop off at a YouTube page, uh, Uniserve USA, you will be able to see the CMA details video, which will give you a thorough explanation on how to do your deal structure as well. So once you've developed the, 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 the true values of the home, okay, then you're able to move on to the very next step. And that's the renovation cost. And this is something that I'm going, I'm going to try not to dwell on too much uh, because we're going to wait for another, another time to do that. We might drop a video for that, but, once you've gotten your initial values, your, your, your comp, comp addresses, um, slash CMA details, uh, it's time to get the renovations. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I said this right here, you need to, to get the general contractors rate as you've probably already kind of known from others. You said, uh, you know, how do you get your, how do you know what the renovations is? Someone just comes up with this magical number and says, you know, this, magical unicorn number times a square foot. That's what the rent, that's what the renovation cost is. No, it's not. Okay. You can't take a, I'm, I'm, and I'm just saying this, I'm gonna be brief so I can move forward, but you cannot take a made up number and, and multiply that by the, by the square foot 
of the home that you're trying to get an assignment on. It's, it's virtually, I, you know, I'm not going to say it's virtually impossible because I mean, I've seen it, I've seen it happen, but I want you guys to understand it's not logical. Okay. <clears throat> if you're in the middle of trying to get a property assigned and, and the buyer, the buyer or the seller, because you're going to have this, the renovation cost is going to build the, the offer going to help build the offer. So when you are, you know, in this person's home trying to figure out the renovation cost, and you, and you just take a, a, a magic number based on light, moderate or heavy, which we're going to talk about that as well. And then you just take that by the square foot. How are you going to logically explain and economically explain to the seller and or the buyer how you got that number? You know, the buyer asks you, OK, so how'd you come up with that renovation cost? We're going to tell them. I got the number. I just picked a, a, a renovation number and then to and uh, multiplied it by the square foot. And that's how I got it. Uh, no, that's not how you do it. So the right me, I, I call it the right way. I mean, there's so many there's other ways to do it, too. And I'm going to even tell you guys, especially for new dealers who are trying to get into this so you can get started and learn how to, you know, learn from from uh, general contractors how to do it so you can develop it so that it'll make your offers come faster. Uh, you can be in and out of the house. Uh, a lot faster so you can hear and get things done. Okay. But right now, you know, the way that you pick up the, the general, the an actual general contractor's rate is based on the area. Now you can probably use County because it's going to be, it's going to be the fair same across different cities, you know, give or take, you know, easy enough. You just call a few of these general contractors and get some rates. Uh, some of them are hourly. Some of them are, are, uh, are, are percentage. You know, probably probably 20 percent of the project cost. You might have heard something like that before. Uh, some of them just have a set cost. Some of them have a specific rate they work at. But the point is, is all you're doing is just calling to get some sort of figure so that way you can get an average, because typically when you're calling in different areas, you're going to get different numbers. So you'll be able to get an average. So so for whoever the buyer decides to choose, you're going to be within the ranges. OK, uh, within within the range between what you got and what they got. Okay. And we're going to, and I'm going to get into that as well. Okay. But it's more than just getting the, the general contractors rate, uh, and then slapping it across the board with the square footage because you got the rate. But one big factor that is missing out of this whole thing is getting the marketable pricing. Okay. Take a kit, take the kitchen for an example. Okay. You, okay, you might have you 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 might you probably have the the general contractor's rate in times of square footage and call it a day, but think about what you're missing. You're missing what it's going to take. Like for the kitchen, for example, you're missing what it's going to take to put stuff to put stuff in the kitchen. You know, such as the countertops. Okay, they're going to go granite. They're going to go quartz. What kind of counters are we going to be using? You know, what kind of style are going to be walnut? Are there going to be some regular pine wood or something like that? You know what I mean? You know, is the sink going to be a regular stainless steel sink? Is it going to be a, 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 a you know, a deep well? Is it going to be a shallow well? You know, is it going to be a single farm sink? You know, a single well farm sink, deep sink? You know, those are things that you need to account for. You got products that's going to be involved too. Okay. Uh, I mean, we still got appliances. We got lighting. We have, you know, ranges. We got the, the vents, you know, things like that need to be accounted for. That also goes for like the bathrooms as well. It's not taking a, a square footage number and calling it a day. Now you, now there are ways to just to get averages, but what you want to do is, is to show your diligence. That's going to be, you know, to the T. So if, you know, for an example, if we're taking, uh, let's just, let's just go ahead and take the kitchen, you know, from, from where I'm at right now. Uh, where I'm at right now, let's just take our kitchen. Okay. So it's like 220 square foot, I believe. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bear with me here. Bear with me just for half a second here. It is not 220. It is more like, let's see here. Cause I know it was like a 12, by 10, yeah, 120. Heck was I thinking 220? I wish I had a 220 square foot kitchen. God, it was like a bedroom. Okay, so about 120 square foot is what I'm looking at for this the little tiny kitchen that I have. Okay, um, 
you know, when you're out there, when you're in this kitchen looking at what needs to be done, you know, it's going to need a, a it's going to need cabinets. It's going to need counters. It's going to need a sink because you're working with the counters. OK, and you probably got to get rid of the old stuff and put in some new stuff. You're going to have some light plumbing problems, you know, light plumbing uh, routing that you might have to do, you know, PCV or something like that. If you piping, whatever you want to use that, no big deal. Uh, just, just depending on depending on what they want to do with it. Uh, you know, of course, you got the appliances floors because you know if, if the floors is linoleum you're going to have to replace that okay okay you know refrigerator and uh you know i mean there's other aspects too you know because you're going to have wall paint you got to repaint some of the walls probably retrim or something like that but just keeping it just product base is getting the marketable prices so now you have a general contractor's rate and then it's time to put the products to go along with it okay now you have exactly what it's going to take to put that to, to put that kitchen together and with a cost with products with the products to be involved so if you're taking a let's just say if that kitchen that we know that kitchen's project rate is going to be about five grand but we still have products that we need to put in there and it's probably going to cost about another uh let's you know i mean for what i want i mean you know if i was looking at the house to put this house uh together just to come just to even get a good comp per se for one of these modular uh homes <laughs> literally right behind me um it's going to cost me about probably like another two and a half okay two and a half grand you know two twenty five hundred dollars so we're not, we're looking at a total you know eight that eight thousand nine thousand dollars okay so you know whenever you guys are getting and gals to are getting out there to get renovations done uh, or to get renovation costs, uh, you know, it's not the typical 15 K that I keep seeing. And most definitely there's no such thing as a range. Uh, so stop overestimating on purpose to try to account, try to stay within a range. It's one number. Okay. A professional structure will have one number because it shows your diligence. Uh, but to, to, to get back, to get back around to what I was talking about, about renovations for you new dealers out there to get started just call a contractor okay? just call one give them a shout tell them that you got a property that you're trying to get under tell them the truth just tell them you got a property that you're trying to get under agreement and you need to get a renovation price if they want to charge you know what charge them the first time because it's going to pay back because you're going to end up paying them to get the estimate but you know what when they get out there you're going to end up following them anyway so just follow them around. Don't ask them a ton of questions. Let them do their job. Okay. Learn about what they're, what they're doing. Look at what they're look, look at what they're looking at. Follow what they're following. You know, they're getting measurements. They're taking a look and seeing, seeing some defects here and there and they're accounting what needs to be done. Take all of that in, suck it all in. Okay. You know, okay. They go through the whole house. Okay. And they leave and then they call you back here a couple of days later and they give you an estimate. Okay. There you go. Boom. Okay. There's the estimate. All right. We still got products and stuff involved. So now you got your estimate. You got your product pricing. Put them together. You have a pretty accurate. You have a just about dead on uh, renovation cost. OK, it's going to be off. OK, so so follow me. Don't put a range in there. Don't put fifty four thousand dollars between fifty four and seventy four thousand. That's which is another magical number. I keep saying twenty thousand dollars seems to be the going trend right now for renovation ranges, which does not exist. Okay, put one number in there. Okay, no rounding, no rounding off the number. Show your diligence down to the last cent. Whatever you come up with, put it all in there at the last to the last penny. Okay, you show your diligence. It shows you're not doing lazy math. You understand? Okay, so I mean that's just. I, you know, that's just the, the, the rough basics on, on getting started with that. OK, um, you know, if if you need to, you know, I even wrote this down right here. Like if, if you need to uh, to learn the marketable pricing, you know, the marketable products, go to Lowe's. Matter of fact, matter of fact, create yourself an assignment. OK, follow me. Create yourself an assignment. Use your own apartment or home and and do, and, and use it for you for, you know, practice. OK, practice with your own. Study your own property to be able to understand how your property is working before you do others. This is be perfect. Okay, look, do your own home. Okay, go to the, start with your kitchen. Go to the kitchen, take measurements. Okay, 
keep your measurements now take measurements of the counter take measurements of the uh the kitchen itself the length and width okay take measurements of the counter of the countertops okay i'm not the count well the countertops the cabinets you know t you know take take a measurement of all that go to lowe's or home depot okay and just look for not the cheapy weepy stuff but go look for the moderate type go look for the moderate products you know moderately priced products of what it's you know for cabinets sinks the, the you know the, if you want to go ahead and dwell in a little bit more of the accessories for the sink you know the the knobs and stuff the little sprinkler that goes with it you understand find a deep well stain look for a stainless steel deep well look for a you know uh porcelain or something deep well you just write it in there okay just, just you just take your pen and pad too you want to write all the stuff down while you're there you know don't get any help from anybody. You want to do it yourself. You understand? Unless you need help finding something. Okay. You want to do it yourself. You don't need somebody following you around telling you what needs to be done because you want to be there to get it off yourself. All you're doing is you're just studying average prices of the products out there. And then I'm going to get to the point why, you know, do the same thing for, do the same thing for refrigerators. Okay. Stainless steel refrigerator. Go do a stainless steel refrigerator if you need to. If you're working on smaller homes, and you know you feel that that home doesn't need you know a stainless steel or anything higher go look for a regular go look for a regular uh uh you know regular looking refrigerator with some quality you know some open it up it's got that blue led light in it you know stuff like maybe maybe one with a with a i guess what they call a bottom freezer i like those, those are awesome you know things like that just you know something to spruce it up you know uh, a range uh the range vents you know you want to keep an eye on those uh some you know you know lighting and you know you want to just do that just focus on the kitchen see how see how much it would it would cost to do your own kitchen and then you can get that right you can get any other home right don't matter the square footage don't matter how much it needs because you've got that down to a t by by this point okay same for the bathroom all right same for the bathroom we'll just focus there we'll come back and do all the whole other assignments later okay but you're gonna do the same thing for the bathroom See how much it's gonna cost to put put a nice little shower in there. Go get one of those those little stainless steel looking shower heads that they put in there with a little long with a with a long little box on there. You know that's probably forty dollars. Um, you know, uh, maybe match the sink to the kitchen and you know to the sink the kitchen sink or something like that for the for the bathroom or whatever. You know, go do the measurements in there. Get the cost for that. You know, are you are you, are you gonna have uh, hardwood in there? Are you gonna do a, a Maybe a, a soft tile or something, or, or a soft tile or a tile or something. Whichever way you go with it, uh, if anything, I probably I wouldn't even tile. I'd probably, I, I would. I'm sorry, I wouldn't hardwood. I would tile it because you got moisture and stuff in because the shower and stuff. So you know, you see how much tile costs for the floor, okay? Then you got paint. You know, you want to get these things and put them together. You understand? Now, considering considering that we do have. A, a system that can put all this for you it's right now it's 100 percent free we will, we will provide that uh over time we'll probably unveil it here on the next uh, episode or so but right now you have the basics about renovations now okay i mean it's more than just taking that number taking a magic number and, and then multiplying it calling it a day now you have an actual logical number put together with the pr marketable products multiplied by the square footage now, when that buyer asks you, so how'd you get your numbers? You can tell them, well, based in the area, the contractor's rate going for this much, contractors are doing things for about this much, and with products, with the marketable products going for, you know, whatever range, whatever price you end up with, about the average price, about 62, 55, 36. You know, we've, we've put it all together based on what that home needs, based on what the home uh, is is going to need as per our buyer. This is how we. This is the renovation estimate. Same thing. Ever wondered how a con general contract uh, a general contractor can walk in your house and walk right out and two and a half minutes later, boom, they get you a a, a rate right then and there. How do you think they're getting that? Now, aside they already know. Aside from that, they already know their their the the price of you know their own rate, of course, but. When they give you when they give you an estimate minus the products, as you know, it, it 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 the way that some of the contractors work is they have a certain amount that's just going to cost them to get there. Some of them they're just going to take them thirty thousand dollars right off the bat just to get them there, 
just just for them to show up at your door. Okay? We haven't talked. We haven't talked any labor or anything else like that. So, you know, you just have to kind of do your research on that. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. Okay. So, you know, uh, you know, going down to I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip a section real quick. So we're looking at the deal structure. So now that you have an idea about CMA details, which which, by the way, the uh, I'm going to say one more time, the video uh, it's called CMA details. You can look that on the YouTube channel. It's called CMA details. So you guys know how to put the CMA details together. And then because the renovation will the renovations will follow that. OK, or will I say will be within it. OK, so, you know, it brings them down to the deal structure. To be able to 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 build your deal structure, which you will be able to find that on that same video, the same same CMA uh, video as well. Um, when you're doing your 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 structure, because the buyers are going to want to see your diligence. Now, you not to say you're doing their job, but you are showing them that you've done your diligence by which if you watch the video, you know how this diligence works. OK, but I have to add in is, you know, you have to raise your standards. I would I would stop talking in K's. OK, you don't hear multimillion dollar people talking in M's. You know what I'm saying? Oh, speaking, speaking thousands, you guys. I want to hear I want to hear a hundred thousand. I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, I got a property on an assignment for sixty five thousand. I want to hear sixty five K, sixty five K. Kind of kind of running marathon. Are we talking about here? Sixty five K. I can barely do half a K. Anyways, you know, uh, one thing about doing your comps, as you probably know, when I'm saying CMA details, comps is the same thing. OK, so CMA details, uh, I'm sorry, comps need to be, uh, you know, the same. Like I said before, it needs to be the same bed and baths, the uh, uh, similar square footage. And of course, in the same division, same story. OK, and preferably with the. You know, they say within two miles, as long as it's within the same division, I like to try to keep them a little closer than that. But sometimes you just can't get them. You can't get them. You can't get enough to be able to get a comp unless you do go out that way. As long as it's within the same division and everything else, then you're good. OK, now, one thing I do want I do want to add in is <clears throat> is you want to be sure that the square. I don't know if I already said the square footage just need to be between 200 square foot of the selling property. I'm a little tight on mine, but you know, give or take a little bit more or, or whatever is okay. But you don't want to be four or five hundred square foot, of, you know, off. Because I've seen some 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 comps come out where uh, you know they're working a three two, but what they're telling, what they're showing me is a two one, or they they have a four three, and I'm getting three ones, and 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 you know, just just scattered comparables, and I just can't, I just not look good at all. Okay, so you know. Uh, <clears throat> which is going to bring me to one uh, another uh, segment or another tier of this real quick, and it's that's rounding numbers. You know, I just said something about lazy, you know, lazy math. Uh, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I got that from Grant Cardone. I <laughs> I didn't really think about it being lazy math. I've always hated rounded rounding numbers because it shows it it, it automatically tells me you, you you don't know what you're looking. You didn't know what you're looking for. You took something off of the estimate and just rounded it up the number and call it a day. That's what it looks like to me. But, you know, you know, it is to me, it's lazy math because uh, as a former management consultant, the last thing you want to do is show somebody a rounded number unless the math turns it into that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that goes for percentages. My percentages are always whatever the number is. If it comes out as 17, 16, 17.68, it's 17.68. There's no 17.7. OK. Um, so, you know, j you know. By choice now, I mean, people are going to do K's. I, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to help, you know, some of you guys. I just try to get started on, you know, kind of raising your standards. So you start looking more of a professional, you know what I mean? Not just looking more of, a, of the professional, but now you're going to be doing the business as a professional, too, because whether people want to talk down on talk down to you or not, you're 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 going to be a professional. When you start this industry, you're going to be a professional, whether they like it or not. So what we're looking at right here. On um, the last part of this here, and is this the no ranging cost? I have to explain this right now. Like I said before, this trending twenty thousand dollars on the ARVs and the renovations just got. We have to put a stop to that, you guys. Don't stop doing your structures where the ARV is one hundred and fifty one hundred and fifty k between one hundred and fifty k and one hundred and seventy k. I do not know who is trending that twenty thousand dollars. But I see a lot of new dealers putting that in there. And boy, does it does it does it really like splits my foundations when I see that. 
who is trending twenty thousand dollars between these the, the, between prices? What's going on here? So seriously, guys, like I, like I mentioned before, show your diligence. It's one number. Okay, the ARV is one number, not a not a between or a range. Okay, same for the renovations, one number. Okay, whatever the comparables come out as, no rounding down to the very last cent, unless it, unless the math makes it even. Okay, down to the last cent. That's it. Now I am going to say, uh, uh. I don't think I put it. I don't know if I did it or not about this because I've been noticing some of these buyers are using uh, per square foot. They're using per square foot on the uh, uh, the ARV. So I'm kind of developing a part two for the CMA details to show what I call an ARV average. And I will, I will discuss that more into it. But I mean, other than that, you guys, I mean, Right now, this is just some of the things, you know, that can help you. And I'm going to add to this real quick. OK, um, you know, that's just giving that's just giving you some general knowledge of what you do in the beginning. OK, I mean, now, now, what what is the pre of the prerequisite I, is I may want to call it. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, so like, you know, the numbers now you got the general knowledge on how to get the numbers. Now, how in the heck do you get them? OK, well, now I want you to understand something. I want to give it away right now. OK. You're going to go to realestateabc.com. Go to realestateabc.com. That's the, that's, that's a good website to start doing your comparables. Okay. Now you, you're going to see something up there that's going to say Zestimates. Okay. First off, do not look at that. Okay. Do not focus on that right now. You, that's not where your comp is. That's not where you round off at. That's not what you write down on your structure. Okay. You're going to type in the address and the city and state, and then you're going to hit enter and you're going to scroll down and you'll see a big list of addresses as well as the selling property. Okay. You want to take note of the selling property and you, you're going to find comparables down there. Uh, that should be alike to the property with similarities to them. If you know, you got, you got to look for them. Okay. Uh, now that's one website. If you can't find them there, go to freshcomps.com. Freshcomps.com. Both websites, matter of fact, are 100% free and you can get your comparables that way. Okay. Don't want to use those websites. Believe it or not, you guys don't want to go jump in tabs and stuff and screens. Go to Zillow.com and look at the sold properties. They're there. They all end up in the same. They all end up in the same spot because you know what? I do have to. I do have to jump areas, uh, jump websites sometimes. Because sometimes real estate ABC doesn't give me the comparables. And sometimes I get a com I may get one from another website. I might get one from real estate ABC. And then I have to jump to Zillow. And kind of and kind of go through the market, even when it's not a sold property, and just see what property sold um, next to that uh, the, to the selling property. You know, even if it's if it's not showing sold, sometimes those prices that show that look like market that shows the market prices or a estimate maybe. Uh, you know, I'll click on those and I actually pull them up in Real Estate ABC just to see when that house sold. And I try to keep it within. Which reminds me, another thing about your CMA details, I try to keep it within one year of the selling property date. So, you know, I keep hearing six months to one year. I've actually heard three months. There's no way possible. Okay. Broaden your horizons. It's going to be fine. I think one year is not going to kill anybody. Okay. You know, keep it within one year, six months to one year, the closer, the better now. So, so the more recent, the better in this case. And just wanted to, to, to throw that in. So how in the heck do you actually find the property? Okay. I might've should have said this first, but the way that I find the property is, and I mean, you can believe it or not, once again, I go to Zillow. I look at Zillow. I go to Zillow or any other consumer website that uh, that, you know, that hosts, you know, the, the properties for sale. And what's the first thing that I do? I'll go look and see what they're selling it for. And I'll look at the ARV or the Zestimate. I'll put that in quotes for those that are listening to the podcast. I'm putting it in quotes. I'm gonna do it again. Zestimate. OK. And my focus right now at that point is is the selling price. Uh, uh, lower than the AR than the Zestimate. Okay, if it's lower than the Zestimate, I'm going to write it down as a potential. Now these are not leads; these are potentials. They don't turn into leads until they qualify. You understand? So I'm put I'm putting these potentials down and creating a list. Of course, they end up in our in, in our uh, CRM, and uh, we'll do our list that way. And I look for properties like that. And as long as that as long as that asking price is lower than the than the Zestimate, then that's motivation by that's motivation in itself. Motivation is more than just waiting to see if it's at the seller and motivation could be in the price. 
So take that into account too. You know, if you ever hear people talk, oh, it, it, are the sellers motivated? Who cares? Is the price motivated? That's what I want to know first. Who cares about what the seller thing? I don't want to know about the seller right now. What I want to know is when I am getting ready to make that offer, to be able to to fire this off to anybody, is the price motivated? That's what I'm looking for. Tell me that I'm looking at a home that's three hundred fifty thousand dollars, but that ARV is four hundred sixty seven. You doggone right, that's motivated. I'm going to write that down. Okay. So, you know, gather your list. And once you've gotten that, uh, my very next step is I contact the seller. Cause now this is what I'm doing by qualifying. Now I write them down. I might do what I call a soft CMA. I might quickly just run in the digits real quick to see what I'm looking at for the actual numbers. And then when I'm done, <clears throat> and then when I'm done with that, I might, I'll, I will give the seller client a call or I will send them a letter or whatever, and then wait for them to respond. But uh, overall, once I have made correspondence with them and I've reached out to them, I'm talking to them. Um, you know, I make my, you know, make my general, you know, introduction and then see what, about what we can do. If they say, yeah, sure. Tell me what you got. And, you know, I'll give them a quick phone call. Sometimes I give them an offer on the spot. I've been doing it for a while, but I give them an offer on the spot and you will, you will too, as you progress. But otherwise that's my very next step. I give them a call and say, Hey, are you interested in that at all? And they say, sure. Okay. I said, well, all right, give me about, give me about. Five minutes, I give you a call. I say that's less than five minutes, but I'll say give me five minutes. Give me about five minutes and I'll, you know, return your call with with an with an absolute offer and we can proceed from there. How's that sound? Yeah, well, it sounds good. Okay. Well, okay, there we go then. So then I'll then I will just uh I'm sorry, I said five minutes. My mistake, my mistake. I always tell them about about thirty minutes. I don't know where I got five minutes from. I really don't have any excuse to why I said five minutes. Well, anyways, thirty minutes because the list that I work. I would I would break my list up. That's why I, I do about 30 minutes because I want to call these groups of people to be able to give time, give myself time to run my numbers. But anyways, after they say, sure, you can. Yeah, I'm interested. Let me shoot. Tell them what your offer is. You know, whenever you call me back. OK, so we'll call them back. <clears throat> uh, tell them we'll call them back. And then then I will take the time to run my actual numbers on the property because it's going to give me time to research. OK, so give me time to pull up these properties and build my deal structure. Because it's going to have the CMA details included. You understand? Hey, okay, then after that, the very uh, uh, once I've developed my numbers, once I see what I can do with the property, whether it if it's thin, there's other options that you can do. Now you probably heard that word thin. Now what I mean by thin is where that was where pretty much that profit is just not where, or, or as you probably heard, no meat on the bones. Okay, but you know what? I don't care if there ain't no meat on the bones. Somebody gonna eat. Trust me. There's a deal in every deal, whether it's skinny, thin, slim. What, what's that V word? You know, big, whatever. We're going to all eat regardless. You just have to know how to you just have to know how to, how to structure it. Okay? Just because it's too thin don't mean you can't make it thick. Trust me. Okay? But anyways, uh, I don't know. It made me think of the deal when I was talking about that. So, you know, after I see that the the potential deal that I'm working is going to work out. Uh, depending on what I'm looking at, I would go ahead and give them a call back and say, how you doing? I'm, this is Anthony uh, here at Uniserve USA. And I just want to let you know that I have your offer. And then here's the offer. Okay. And then, you know, well, you know, sometimes I have to, I have to, you know, you're going to have to negotiate with them. So there's going to be some negotiations. So stay tuned for, you know, for things like that. We're going to be talking more into this, I promise. Okay. But, you know, you may have to negotiate with, negotiate with them, but for, for the most part, all you would end up having to do uh, is if they say, OK, you know, I like that offer. OK, then the very then the very next step you need to do is to, you know, just go ahead and get it signed. OK, because you, if you've done your renovations already, then then it's fine. But uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Let me back off. After they say this is after you call them back and, and ask for, you know, tell them what the offer is, because what you want to do is you always want to account for what for what the. Uh, you know, the, you, you've probably heard about the 70 percent rule, which is, you know, we're going to get into that. OK, right now, it's just about getting started. I want to let you guys know the general process. You make the offer. And uh, get your 70 percent rule down. But you, but uh, in actuality, before you make that offer, you want to schedule to get somebody out there to go look at the property. OK, once you get a renovation, once you're on site and you get the renovation, um, uh, get the renovation. Then you can build your offer from from right then and there and then tell me the offer. Then you can focus on getting it signed, getting your assignment agreement uh, uh, signed, approved, as I like to say, and then you're off. 
Okay. Now the way I explain it uh, by mistake, cause I've been doing it for so long. I can do it on the computer 100% because I can pull renovations based on the area because we have our dealer calculator. We have our dealer calculator as well as our renovation uh, system, both made in house for Uniserve USA. So, um, but otherwise when you, when you get to the point of calling them to say, Hey, I'd like to make an offer on your property, make the schedule, uh, get a schedule, see if you can get somebody out there with you, you know, then follow that renovation assignment that I was talking about, get, get a general contractor out there, da, da, da. There's now you're out there. You can get your offer. I'm sorry. You can get your renovation costs. Now you can finish building your structure and build that offer. Okay. And we're going to talk more about that offer. We're not, we're not going to do too much math on this one. We will say that for another segment. We might do that for another video as well. Okay. But otherwise, now that you got that contractual agreement, now it's just time to get it out the door. Now it's time to now it's time to go ahead and stick that circle on the grill and time to time to grill it up and see who's gonna come come begging. You know what I'm saying? So you got that good deal. So overall, after you get that done, and a buyer says, Hey, uh, I'm interested in your property because you know you've marketed it out. You know, I'm interested in your property. Let me see what you got going. You send it to them. And then they'll make a schedule to go out there and take a look at the property. You don't have to be on site if you don't want to, but it's probably good. So that way you're there, uh, you know, just because diligence, you know, you're there. The buyer says, hey, I'm ready to roll out. You get a purchase and sale agreement ready to roll out for them. And then you get them to sign that sucker. And then whatever EMD, if, you, if you're requiring an EMD or the seller's requiring an EMD, go ahead and get that, that PSA signed and get that sucker on down to escrow. Time to close. And that's where your money's coming from. What happens after that? You get you get called in like jury duty. You go up there and get your money, and it is time to repeat. And you have now done a successful sale. That's how it is in a, in a nutshell. There's, there's going to be so much to it, okay? Which is why I said earlier that this is not. Uh, and if I did, I'm going to say it again that this is not a get rich. This is not a get rich quick business. No patience, no pay. You understand? Come at it at a hundred percent, but in a nutshell, that's pretty much how it works. And you know, it, you you can't really beat, you can't really beat, really beat this. I mean, hey man, I mean your your assignment could be upwards of of ten thousand, twenty thousand, okay? depending on how you structure that deal. I mean, if you want to go ahead and try some other little options, you might be able to pull in twenty twenty five. Okay, it just depends on what that deal, what that deal is doing. I want you to understand this too. One last thing. Okay, so the so the deal is not in the asking price. I want you to understand that the deal is not in the asking price. The deal is in the numbers, you guys. But I do want to thank everyone for. <clears throat> wow, I'm sorry. I do want to thank everyone for listening to this very first episode of our podcast over here on Reverb. This is Anthony, your host, and you guys stay tuned for the very next episode and be sure to follow our video on Uniserve USA on YouTube. And uh, we want to thank you guys for, you know, hanging out with me. Let me talk to you. I hope you learned something. If you got any questions, uh, I'm going to put in the description on how to reach out to me. Have a good day, you guys.